Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new to the channel, then uh, glad to have you here. Today we're talking about uh, the electrics and wiring on, on our boat um, and how we how we get power and distribute it to where we need it. Uh, I'd like to start by saying I'm not a, uh, an electrician, um, so this is how uh, we did it. Uh, and the, the reasons why we went down the routes we did and the equipment we used and so on. Um, I've done my research on YouTube and, and specific channels on uh, how to do certain things. So, um, and I've, I've followed the uh, boat safety standard checklist to, to make sure I'd, I'd you know, followed their guidelines. So um, all is good, but I, I just want to say, you know, um, I'm not an electrician, so, uh, if you have any doubts about any area, especially with electricity, uh, definitely either seek seek a, a, a qualified person, um, and and don't blame me. <laughs> okay, so unless you're in a marina or uh, on a powered mooring, you're gonna need to make your own electricity. Um, there's 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 a number of ways of getting this electricity. Um, and and there's a couple of types of electricity that you may want to use um, so the types obviously you may want to use 230 volt uh, ac mains uh, which is the same as you use in the house um, and this could come from a hookup if you're in a marina um, or a powered mooring maybe um, and and your 12 volts or your dc dc voltage should we say um, you don't have to use 12 volts, you can use 24 or 48, and there are benefits to using that. Um, but we've gone down the 12 volt route, so uh, let's say that when I'm talking DC and I say 12 volts, just be you known, there are other voltages you can use, but we've gone with 12 volts. You can also get uh, the 230 volts from uh, a generator, uh, petrol or, or diesel. Uh, diesel are quite expensive. Um, and they, they will plug into your, your hookup point, uh, same as if you're on a, a hookup at a marina. Um, and you can also get 230 volts through an inverter. So that is powered from your 12 volt battery supply, um, but then converted into 230 volts and then obviously distributed around the boat the same way as if you're on the hookup. Uh, there's an overhead of using a, an inverter. Um, just by it being on, um, we'll use some power from your, your batteries and the actual uh, mechanism of converting into 230 volts uses power as well. Um, so you use slightly more power than you um, than you are using in, in AC, if you get what I mean. So you, you, you know, if you're using a thousand watts in AC, you may be actually using say 1300 watts DC. You're using, a, there's an overhead on top to actually to make the conversion, um, which is why a lot of people throughout the winter, um, you know, they'll turn off their inverter um, um, and, and fridges and so on and stuff like that. So they don't need to have their inverter on just so that you're, you're gaining, keeping as much power as possible. Uh, just a quick side note, um, you may not want 230 volts at all, no mains power at all. You may not need it. Um, and many boaters don't need it. Then you can get 12 volt fridges and so on. Um, and that can make life easier. Um, a little bit of solar, and even in the winter, you know, you can get by, you don't hardly ever need to run your engine and so on and such to charge your batteries. So um, we enjoy the um, the luxuries of having mains. So just the bigger TVs, smart TVs, dishwasher um, and stuff like that. Um, the selection of non 12 volt items, should we say, is just a bit larger if you can go down the household route. Um, so yeah, you, you don't need to have 230 volts. And that, and if you can get by like that, uh, that does make your life easier. So for your 12 volt system, your DC system, which is uh, a direct current, as it's known by, um, this is obtained from batteries. Uh, and there's a number of type of batteries um, and you can go spend time going into the, the makeup and chemistries of each of these batteries. There, there are positives and, and negatives of, of, um, of using each type. Uh, the main types uh, seem to be uh, lead acid and they're of uh, a sealed variety. So no caps at the top to pop open and, and, and fill and check with, uh, with fluid. So they're kind of uh, just put it in and, and forget about it sort of thing. 
um, and they're quite good for you know, cramped spaces and stuff like that where you're not going to want to sort of kind of climb in bang your head try and get a mirror to see how much fluid you've got in there and that sort of thing um, and there's a, a, a flooded uh, wet version should we say um, and then they used a, a deionized water just to top up the, the levels um, there's uh, AGM uh, glass mat batteries um, and they've got some benefits uh, deeper depth of discharge and uh, I think qu quicker charging times uh, there's lead carbon which are again that bit sort of more improved uh, a lot quicker charging times I believe um, and then we get into lithium the, the LifePo4 they seem to be the batteries of choice uh, if you've got the right setup and you know you can place them in the right location uh, the charging times and the whole chemistry and the way they're used uh, really seem to be the way to go uh, at the time when we were looking into batteries uh, and this was only a year uh, two, no, sorry two years now we're getting on for um, the cost of lithium was a lot more there's definitely a lot more cheaper versions uh, through the, uh, uh, the Chinese uh, companies you say um, but even uh, some, some pretty good UK companies now that are, that are doing quite good deals um, and the cost is, is, is pretty comparable to, to some of the lead acid setups now as well um, with all the benefits of lithium um, so depending on whether we end up staying on a mooring uh, year round now um, we will definitely consider um, adding some lithium into our, our, our battery bank in a hybrid setup which seems to be quite a good way to go and, and, and quite a favorable way to go at the moment um, into our system but that's only going to be of any benefit if we are actually going to be coming off of a, off of a mooring um, if we're staying on a mooring uh, we were advised to just go with uh, some kind of bog standard 12 volt batteries um, there's these lead acid batteries they don't seem to be very uh, robust uh, you really got to seem to look after them uh, as far as uh, depth of discharge and, and, and that sort of thing um, they can take really high uh, amperages and really dish out sort of lots of power um, and they're quite robust in that way but um, you can only discharge them to 50% so you only get half the capacity of what you actually have um, and they don't like being left discharged for too long <clears throat> so you, you are finding you need to get them charged back up to 100% pretty much as soon as possible and um, and with the makeup of the chemistry that last 10% of, of getting them to 100% really takes a long time um, the, the, the resistance gets really high and so pushing the, the current into the battery uh, it becomes harder and, the, and your amps drop that you're pushing in um, and that can take quite some time to get them up to 100% and uh, yeah, from what I've been told you know you, you kind of want to do that uh, worst case at least once a month um, we tend to try and do it almost every time maybe it's too much there'll be the odd day when we you know we're, you know, we're getting to a certain percentage we're like we're happy with that um, but but it's in an ideal world you you discharge the batteries as small amount as possible um, and you keep them at 100% as much as possible which uh, when you're trying to you know run a house basically that's that's not ideal uh, with the lithiums uh, they work just like your phone so they kind of prefer not to be charged up to the maximum all the time or left charging um, and, and and again they can go down to 10% uh, there's always an improvement if you don't go too low, but I mean, 10% is quite quite adequate. Um, and and they like being charged somewhere in the middle and they can be left like that for as long as you like. Um, and the charging is is so much quicker that you kind of, ha you can almost forget about your batteries. You can just use your power, um, keep a little eye on it um, and just, just enjoy life. Uh, with lead acid batteries and, and those makeups, you, you do find your battery life is your life uh, you know you're you're loving the solar you get the free energy but you're just always keeping an eye on your batteries and, and aware of where they are where I think uh, potentially as long as you've got all of your safety equipment your cutoffs and stuff like that for lithium um, you can kind of forget about it and just get on with with, with stuff um, but like I said two years ago lithiums were out of our price range um, so it just wasn't really an option uh, what I did do some investigation about um, was I found that six volt batteries uh, actually have a thicker plate on them uh, and so 
they they're that little bit more robust again uh, you can be a bit um not abusive but um just just a little bit more uh leeway with how you, how you treat them um and, I, and knowing that we have dishwashers and washing machines and, and a lot of power usage i want them to be able to take a bit, bit of a beating i guess so the batteries were six volt and 210 amp hours uh, so when in parallel that made them uh, so that would be 630 amp hours in total and then when series across uh, so joining the two batch six volt batteries to make them into a 12 volt battery that gave us a total battery bank of um, a 12 volt 630 amp uh, amp power uh, life should we say power storage amount of hours running at one amp um, Again, there's there's videos on amp hours and how that's calculated and, and, and at what rates that changes and so on. Okay, as I said, um, ideally with lead acid, you only want to take your batteries down to sort of 50%. So although the battery bank is 630 amp hours, we've only got a, a usable amount of, uh, of, of amp hours of 315. So with our um, usage, um, which I will say, um, if you join, there's a couple of groups to join on Facebook that'll be really helpful. Uh, there's one called 12 Volt Voting Group, um, and there's a, a, not a sister sister group, but I believe there was a split off from the original group, and that was called 12 Volts Voting Group. Um, both really helpful. A lot of very knowledgeable people in there, um, and, and 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 in the 12 Volt Voting Group, I know there's a file section, lots of helpful guides, um, and in there is what they call a power audit. Uh, and you basically fill in all of your devices, all of their um, their watt usage, so the power they would use in, um, and you would you set how um, how many hours a day they're used or on for, um, and, and you list it all up, and it gives you your then your daily uh, amp hour usage, um, and and also it can suggest uh, how many watts, how many panels, or how many watts in solar should you want to go down that route. Um, what you would need to um, to be able to charge those batteries back up or maintain those batteries. Um, so yeah, they're really really helpful groups. Um, there's also a um, a web page. Uh, if you Google this, there'll be lots. Um, but I just found um, they were quite useful for purchasing certain items as well. Uh, there's a 12 volt planet, um, and in there, one of their guides or uh, one of the tabs, there's a um, a voltage drop calculator. So with DC circuits. Uh, you can experience voltage drop um, across distances. So for the longer runs of your cables, uh, the voltage can drop over that distance. So you have to increase the size of your cable to account for that drop, to allow uh, more current through. So you keep your, your 12 volts at 12 volts. Um, and that was a really useful got a little calculator there uh, to um, whenever I had to order a cable and work out what sizes I needed, um, that was a big help. So that'd be useful for you. So the battery bank is uh, it's very heavy um, on their own individually the batteries are heavy um, and so they need to be secured again all, all of these uh, sort of stipulations that are in your boat safety standard um, guide your, your checklist so it's definitely worth getting that um, it will help you throughout your build um, and, and you'll know you're doing everything correct as you go along um, and you'll be good then when you come to get your uh, certificate signed off um, so the batteries need to be secured. Uh, they tend to go into the engine bay. Um, you don't have to do this. You put your batteries wherever you like. Um, but uh, depending on your layout, so for us, that's where our control panel is. It's the most space. Um, and, and with ours, um, you know, when you're charging, if you're overcharged, there could be some gassing. That's not nice. So it needs to be ventilated. You don't really want it in a, in a, a living compartment. Um, Lithium batteries, completely different, no gassing or anything like that. Um, and ideally, they'd like to be kept a little bit warm. Uh, you shouldn't uh, charge them, I believe it is, below something like zero degrees or five degrees or something like that. So if they're in an engine bay throughout the winter, you kind of need to keep them slightly warm um, to use them. So there's, you know, there's one of the disadvantages of lithium. Um, you, need, you need to watch where you put them. That said, they're smaller and a lot lighter. So, you know, they could quite easily go into the bottom of a kitchen cupboard or somewhere like that. Um, wouldn't be a problem. You need half half the amount of batteries that you would for lead acid because you can use the full amount of the battery. So um, our batteries went in the engine bay. Um, I had to have a uh, a rack 
metal framework uh, built and, and welded into the boat because that isn't actually something that comes um, with a sail away. Again, sail away is empty shell, spray foamed, engine wired up so you can be dropped in the water and cruise away. You're watertight, you've got doors that don't have locks on. Well, the front does, but not the, not the stern doors. You've got windows um, and all your mushroom vents in, but that is it. So all these little things that, uh, like a battery, battery rack and stuff like that, um, could be worth considering having a chat with your boat builder um, at the beginning. Just if it's something you know that you don't know any welders and things like that, you don't know somebody who can do it for you, on, you know, for cheap or something like that. You, you know, you, you to save aggro, a little extra to, to charge the boat builder to, to do that for you could just make life a little bit easier. Um, as it was, we were in a in a boat yard um, and they they welded one in for us, no problem. Um, so that needs to be um, it needs to be ventilated. So we, we've basically got a framework. We've got a board on the front and we've got a board across the top. So there's, there's, there's gaps and plenty of ventilation all around it. Um, they need to be struck down so that should the boat tip in a in a lock or you know anything like that, uh, it's over so many degrees. Again, in your boat safety, safety guide, um, the batteries can't tip, fall over, short out, cause a fire. Um, so you, you, they need to be strapped down, secured down, um, and the terminals need to be covered. So this could be with the, the, the little covery plastic covers that connect directly over your terminals, or it could just be a cover that covers across the top, which is what we've gone gone with. Um, it's removable, so you can get above it, um, and like I said, check uh, the, the fluids, um, but it's to stop anything falling on top and again, shorting out. Uh, you know, these batteries can give a lot of current, can give a lot of power, so um, could, you know, could easily start a fire, could easily, it's almost like welding, you know, it's that sort of power. So you gotta be careful, we've gotta protect. Uh, the, the board across the front, um, and then it is also useful. Uh, so we have our uh, isolation switches, and bus bars fitted to that, and any fuses all across the front, because uh, all those sort of things on your power end, uh, your batteries, they need to be fitted as close to the batteries as possible. Um, and so that's the perfect place. So to get the 12 volts from the battery um, and distribute it um, throughout the boat, uh, we ran a cable from the batteries uh, up to our 12 volt distribution panel, uh, which is just, just as you go in through the door. I'll show you a picture now. Uh, that control panel is uh, switched and has breakers. Um, we bought this uh, through a guy, I think he was on Facebook, uh, and really helpful guy. Panel looks great. Um, and, and you can talk to him with the layout um, and labeling of all your switches, what they're for. Um, and he put some cutouts for us to add our uh, battery monitoring displays and, and, and such. Uh, really helpful guy. I'll put his uh, email in the dis description below. So the cable running from the batteries up to this distribution panel uh, was 16 millimeters squared. Um, and, our all ca and all cables on a boat uh, are of the stranded variety. Uh, there's no solid core cables allowed. Um, I believe it's already, already on your boat, um, you know, uh, that's that's okay. But if you're gonna be replacing any cable, I, as far as I'm aware, um, it needs to be the stranded variety. Uh, so this is 60 millimeter cable. Uh, it, it's rated at 110 amps. Um, we're not gonna be going, going uh, anywhere near that just for our 12 volt circuit throughout the boat. It's just for lights, um, water pumps, um, a few displays, Alexa, charging phones, stuff like that. So even together, it was nowhere near that. Um, it was about three and a half to four meter run. So there would be some voltage drop. So just to just to belt and braces and give us some future proofing if we wanted to add anything, uh, we went with 16 millimeter uh, squared cable. That connects up to a, a bus bar up in our uh, electrics box, should we say, cupboard. Um, and then from there, individually across to each uh, switched circuit on the control panel. And then from obviously from the other side of that switch out to our lighting circuits, which are split for lounge, uh, galley, nearly what it said, uh, kitchen, um, and the head toilet and, and the bedrooms. Um, and then obviously any higher powered circuits. So um, uh, water pumps, the, uh, the pump on our pump out toilet, the macerator pump, um, 
and Gold Pro Pump. These these are slightly more power. Um, so they had uh, a 16 millimeter squared cable again run down uh, the stern side of the boat to another fuse box, which can split off then to each pump. Slightly smaller cable then, rather than running like a uh, I don't know four or six mil cable all the way down to each pump, ran a 16 mil cable down and then split off. So it's fused there again and then split off to the pumps with a, a more uh, sensible sized cable. Um, works out probably not a lot cheaper, but just an easier way. I just found it was an easier way to do it. Um, just the one cable down um, and then we can just fuse it and, and run it off, not a problem. Um, with pumps, you've got some flexibility here with your with your um, with voltage drop and so on. That um, that most likely you're not necessarily going to have um, all your pumps running at the same time. Um, so our water pump most likely would be running at the same time as the gold pump because um, you have the shower running and you have your gold pump to pump the water out. Um, but our water pump is actually on a separate line, single single line running down on on the um, bow side of the boat, bow side, aft, running down the other side of the boat directly to the water pump. So, uh, but you're not going to have the um, the toilet macerator pump running whilst the gulper pump's running. At least I would hope so. I wouldn't want someone to come use the toilet while I'm having a shower. So, um, so you you can kind of gauge your cabling um, based on, you know, you're not necessarily going to have both those pumps running at the same time. Should, should you do that, uh, what you'll find is one of the pumps may not run as fast as it normally would. Um, so, so there is some flexibility with certain things. Uh, you don't want to be uh, having too much voltage drop. I think the cable can get too hot then and it can cause you problems. Um, but what you definitely don't want to be going is too much current um, uh, for the cable that you fitted. That's where it will get hot and melt and start to catch fire. When fusing your cable, you need to have the fuse rating at uh, slightly higher than the the current or amps that you're going to be um, putting through the circuit um, but lower than the maximum amp rating of the cable that you're using so what that means is your fuse isn't going to be blowing all the time because you're overloading it but it will blow before the cable reaches its maximum uh, current rating um, and starts to again melt cook and start start fires uh, so that's that's where you want your fuse ratings and any breaker ratings as well working along the same same way the only difference and benefit to a breaker is that um, should you repair the problem or um, remove an item that's overloading your circuit you can reset it whereas a fuse it will blow and you just have to replace it so these days uh, the lighting in a, in a boat tends to be um, LEDs um, obviously, a lot of older boats had uh, little bulbs with filaments, um, but there's even replacements for those, just changes of the bulb, but it's actually an LED within, inside. Uh, the benefits of LEDs use a lot less uh, electricity, lo loads more efficient, um, and, and there's more flexibility with them regarding dimming and changing colours and all that sort of thing. So, so LED lighting seems to be the way to, uh, people are going, uh, especially with new builds and, and new boats. Um, and, and, and LED is what we've gone with throughout the boat. Um, so due to the, the low power usage that you use, you can actually use quite a thin cable. Um, you can use as, as small as 1.5 millimeter squared cable um, if your runs aren't too too far. Again, you always have to allow for voltage drop. Um, with, our, with our setup and the lengths um, and with some flexibility, if you want to add to it, we went with 2.5 millimeter squared cable. So again, this is a stranded cable. Um, and it's double sheathed, so it has the, the red and the black sheathed cable. So it's got a core, with a, one with a red uh, sheathing, one with a black. And then those, those two are then in turn both covered in a sheath as well. Um, so it's double, double sheathed, double protected, um, and, and run in series. There's so then separate circuits, so we have, uh, like I said, so we have the galley in a separate circuit, the lounge in a separate circuit. So they're each fu uh, fused and switched on the control panel individually, so we can we can kill the power to that circuit completely from that main control panel. Um, and also we have um, the lights, those circuits switched with a wall switch, like you would with a, with a, just in your house. Um, 
So like I said, they're, they're wired in series, so it'd be positive to positive, looped around each, each all the way around to each, uh, each light, and negative to neg negative. Um, and with the switch, you're only switching the positive, tends to be the normal. So you only run the one cable through the switch, one's either side, one in, one out, um, and then up to your lights. Um, you can actually do the uh, two and three way switching, the same as in a house, you have two switches that can control both sets. Um, it's quite simple to wire. Um, that works with DC as well, so that's no problem. And um, and the cables are clipped. Uh, I believe now these distances change depending on um, whether you have the cables in conduit or not. Um, but it's it's uh, every three hundred millimeters or th every nine hundred millimeters. Um, I think with all these things, uh, more is more is better. Um, I, I think in general, most of our cabling is in conduit and is. Um, uh, clipped at 100 meter, 100 millimeter intervals. Sorry, just someone looking through the window. So to measure our usage, so our outgoing power and and to, to view how many amp hours we have left, um, we use the the Victron system, the Victron setup, um, and, and part of that is a a BMV seven one two, I think it's called. Um, it's a battery monitor. Um, that comes with a shunt, so it's, that's a device that can can measure the current flowing through it, um, and you you wire that quite quite near the beginning of your system. So all your negatives um, going in and out of, the, of your boats, so all your charge uh, negatives, and all your load negatives, <coughs> all connect to one side of the shunt, and then you have the one negative coming off the other side across to the batteries. So then that that can can, like I said, I can measure all the current flowing through, so or or all the current coming out, and all the current going back in, um, and that can keep account of that and, and let you know um, how many amp hours uh, you have available in your system. You can also display this as a percentage that can go um, kind of go out of, out of sync and not be quite accurate at times. Um, once your batteries are fully charged and it does its calculation, it will click to 100%, then you can kind of, uh, as long as it's set up correctly, then you can be sure that you're at 100%. But as it goes down and back up a bit again, I'm not sure why, but I, I, you know, I can see it myself by the amount of amps that are being put in when we're charging the batteries that were potentially maybe higher than say 70%. Um, so I don't always go dead by the, the, the percentage, um, but you, if it's uh, counting your amp hours and stuff, um, as long as you've got everything set up correct for how many amp hours your battery uh, can can handle or um, um, store, and how many of you you've used, so all your all of your loads are going through that shunt. Um, if you were to, to wire something directly to the batteries, then it doesn't know it's using that power, and obviously its calculations are being correct. So as long as, as, long as you wire everything correctly, um, <clears throat> gives you a good indication of uh, how much power you have left. As well as the uh, the, the battery monitor display, we also have. Um, uh, another color display um, from on the Victron system. Um, you don't necessarily need to have it, but uh, I love gizmos, um, and it also just gives you a nice graphical display of what's going on. Um, if your batteries are charging, how much solar you've got coming in, um, and it also gives you uh, remote access to that to that data. Uh, can give you all sorts of reports and so on, and you can also view um, the same display and even control that panel. Uh, remotely from your phone or a laptop so you can actually make uh, setting changes um, clear down errors if there's an error and you know you things to come back on you can actually do that and control it remotely so it's quite a good tool um, and uh, part of living on a boat is is uh, is is the power um, you're always looking at how much power you got um, so when I'm away I'm always keeping a check make sure we've got enough power and reminding the girlfriend to turn the engine on to charge it if it needs it and things like that. And then also reminding her to switch the engine off when it's fully charged. So um, it's quite useful. I mean, the Victron stuff's not necessarily cheap, but um, it works well. Um, I like it and everything sort of works together uh, as a whole package. So it's, it's quite good stuff. So to give us uh, a better choice of um, the appliances we can use, we did want to go down to 230 volts. Uh, so, you know, the type of TV you can use um, uh, against the 12 volt version, you know, it's just much better and better fridge freezers and so on. Um, <clears throat> just the way we wanted to go. Water pump. <laughs> um, 
so we went again with the Victron unit. Uh, it was the Multi Plus um, 12 120 3000. So that means it's a 12 volt unit, so it uses 12 volt power from the batteries. Um, the 120 means it's a 120 amp uh, battery charger built in. So when you are plugged into your hookup, um, that Multi Plus will then charge your batteries um, and, and, can, and chuck in as much as 120 amps um, with that charger, all built in, all automatic. Um, and the 3000 means it's a 3000 watt uh, uh, inverter. So it can um, give out uh, 3000 watts. Uh, which is which is good enough to run the likes of dishwashers and uh, microwaves and, and so on. We even had a electric oven for a while. Um, again, I wanted something really uh, funky, touch screen, connects to Alexa and all that sort of thing, but unfortunately it needed to be electric. And uh, with us being out on the cut uh, six months at a time, uh, it just, just wasn't practical. It just used too much power. Um, and so uh, Sunday roasts weren't happening very often. So we changed the gas. <clears throat> So that inverter also has some funky, funky, funk, funky uh, uh, sort of technical things built into it. So if you are on the mains hookup um, and you find you're drawing more than the three kilowatts or the 16 amps that um, that, that the inverter can provide, uh, uh, sorry, the mains hookup can provide, it will actually draw on the inverter as well to kick in uh, and use power from the batteries to give you that extra boost. So um, like in the beginning, um, it took the girlfriend a little while to remember that she couldn't have the toaster, the kettle, and maybe turn on the microwave all at the same time. Um, and this, this can actually kick in and help out, stop everything tripping off and you know, stuff straight away. You may get a, a, a warning like flashing, you're sort of overloading a little bit, and, and then you can kind of switch something off if you need to, but it will, it will help out and you can adjust that, how much it does that. So it's, it's quite a clever, quite a clever kit. Okay, so to power the inverter, uh, Victron specify, um, especially over a certain uh, uh, distance of cable length that you need to run from your batteries to the inverter. Uh, they say they say you should use 50 millimeters squared cable um, and two, so two for your positive and two for your negative. Um, we we were about three and a half meters, I think three and a half to four meters. Um, so that's what we we, we went with. Um, that's fused uh, at the battery end. Uh, and switched so you can isolate the inverter should you need to. Um, I believe it's a 400 amp uh, fuse um, because you can be drawing on quite some power um, when, you know, when you've got things running and, and with the inverter running. Now we have the 12 volts going into the inverter. Uh, this means we have 230 volts mains coming out. So this needs to be uh, so fused or through a breaker, uh, just like in a home, and also have uh, uh, earth earth leakage or earth shorting something uh, um, devices so uh, uh, there are CDs or the, uh, the now these days I think there are something called an RCBO which is your breaker and earth sort of all in one um, and I think they're allowed within within your um, the boat safety standard uh, restrictions um, so the same sort of unit as you have in a house or in fact the same unit you have in a house a consumer unit with all your little trip breakers and the main one, the main sort of earth break that trips, and then also a main switch at the end. Um, if you're on a smaller boat with just a couple of circuits, uh, just like one ring and then one for a fridge, maybe something like that, uh, there are little sort of small uh, garage consumer units, a lot cheaper. Um, we've got a number of devices here. Uh, we've gone for a, a loop, a ring main for all our sockets, and we've got individual raid, what they call raids, it's a single cable from the breaker down to the device for the fridge freezer, uh, dishwasher, microwave, washing machine, so on, stuff like that. Slightly bigger cable for those, uh, four millimeter square cable, opposed to the 2.5 millimeter cable we've done for the ring main. Um, uh, it can handle slightly more uh, power because it's in a loop um, and um, you know on, on our sockets, just normal household items, TVs and stuff. So nothing too high powered. Um, the cable used is again, so it's stranded cable, not solid core like you would have in a house. Um, that's because the with movement on a boat and so on, that cable can, can break, snap, um, and if it should short, um, you know, you, your boat be, could become live. So again, part of the reason for having uh, your uh, RCB units and with, uh, consuming it with your RCDs and so on, is should there be a short to earth, you um, the whole power trip off and hopefully no damage done. Save your bacon. Um,
so it's stranded uh, cable um, and with the DC cable if, if these uh, are being terminated um, in a screw type connection so uh, the back of your main sockets is gen generally you tie it on a screw down and that clamps on your cable uh, with those um, I'm pretty sure now you need to it's uh, not you should should do but I think you have to fit what are known as uh, ferrules or ferrules uh, they're, they're small sheaths that go over the, the paired back cable um, and you, you clamp it onto the end of the cable um, and then when you actually push that end into the whatever you're, you're fitting, light switch, socket, um, as you tighten down that screw that, that squashes that sheath metal covering over the strands of the cable so it makes it a, a, a more of a secure clamping of that, those strands. If you were to screw just onto the strands, some will break away and, and go around the side of the screw. You're not sort of connected at all. It can become, again, could, could sort of be movement and could, could break off. So um, you do need to fit these, these ferrules. And again, like I said, that's for mains and for uh, DC uh, cable. So as I said, the, um, the mains cable, it's not standard cable uh, like in a house, and the, the common one seems to be uh, Arctic Blue, I believe it's called. Um, and there's all sorts of makes, but that's that's the that's kind of the name of that type of cable. Um, and uh, it's it's to be used in in your mains wiring now uh, on a bit. So with bonding, um, your DC battery, so your your starter battery will will definitely be um, earthed or bonded to the hull. Uh, to a, an earthing point. Uh, it's quite often it's somewhere on the engine, when the engine studs maybe. Um, and your house batteries, if they are not linked through your um, your starter battery some way, um, as ours aren't, um, you need to uh, bond them to the same point. So you join them up to that same point on, the, on your hull, wherever that is. Um, and then you run from your consumer unit, you run a, uh, a grounding or an earth, earth cable down to and it's not to the same point, but close. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a distance, but just close to the um, to your DC bonding. Um, I believe if it's on the same point, you can um, cause the, the stray currents and stuff that can corrode your hull. So you have it slightly separate. Um, on the note of the hull corrosion and so on, um, on your incoming cable, so from your um, hookup where you plug in your power from from uh, the marina power um, on the earth wire coming in uh, you can fit two devices there's a galvanic isolator which is a lot cheaper device um, and it's and it's a, a number of diodes going in a specific way to stop these stray currents um, occurring or to, to, to dampen them down um, or you can buy something which is called an isolation transformer um, a lot more expensive but they they do do the job completely separate the the these the currents i, I don't know i've read up on it but i'm not 100 percent sure on it so i wouldn't want to, to try to explain to you guys um yeah, three four or five hundred pounds they can be so um a lot more expensive galvanic and isolator can be anything from 30 40 pounds up to about 100 pounds um you also would have uh, an incoming uh breaker box uh, before you get to your inverter or your consumer unit, you'd have one there just for um, in case there's any issues with the, with the incoming supply. Um, you want that to break and trip so it doesn't damage or cause any problems on your system. So that's a bit of an overview of what we have. Um, I will go into slightly more detail on our um, electronics panel um, and our, our monitoring and our solar and the controllers and stuff like that. Um, not not particularly long videos because um, it's all quite simple um, but that's that's an overview of what we've got um, if you've got any questions by all means ask me and I'll, I can let you know what we've done um, but like I said is I think it's good to do do some of your own research just so you understand what you're doing um, um, and the dangers behind it but as long as as long as you're sensible um, and, and you think about what you're doing do everything safe you know um, it's it's all it's all doable it's all definitely a DIY job um, I think if you do do it yourself, you will struggle to get uh, an electrician to kind of sign off on your work. That's for sure. If they haven't done it themselves, they won't sign off on it. 
but then I don't think you need to actually have anything signed off to say it's been done professionally or it's safe. Um, your boat safety uh, examiner will will check, you know, your connections and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, and 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 tell if what you have done is safe. Uh, but that said, electricity is dangerous. So, um, you know, if you aren't sure of what you're doing, then then definitely um, look into getting expert help. I, I know there are companies out there that if you if you run through socket positions, lighting positions, and stuff like that, they'll come and measure up and they'll produce a loom for you. They'll do a complete wiring loom for you. Um, and then, um, I don't know, maybe get someone in to, to connect it all up or, or have a go at that yourself. But at least you know your cable sizing is correct. Um, so yes, any, any questions in the comments? And uh, hopefully I haven't waffled on, caused, made too many silly faces and tutted and, and so on. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.